The education of many international scholars is in limbo due to effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Add to that, recent graduates who applied for temporary work visas in the U.S. are worrying paperwork will not be processed in time for them to start new jobs. It's all led to confusion. And I get the news alert, the email alert, that Trump's going to come up with an executive order to ban immigration, temporarily ban immigration. I'm just like what do I do? And it was just kind of like a point, you know, <laughs> can I stay? What's going to happen? Azam applied for optional practical training, a program that allows participants to work in their field of study for up to three years. So when I apply for jobs, right, it's very much like, you know, I put in my cover letter, like, you don't have to sponsor me. I have work and I say this, I have work authorization that should kick in, kick in June 1st, just because I'm banking on it. The U.S. government stopped processing non-immigrant visas more than a month ago, since most consular services at American embassies were suspended. And with international air travel also impacted by COVID-19, there's concern how students would get to their respective campuses. We've been having calls about this and conversations about this for the past month about whether or not the students that we had admitted for fall 2020 are going to be able to come. And so far, we just don't know the answer. Hamelin says any expansion of President Trump's executive order restricting non-immigrant visas could have a devastating impact on higher education in the United States. Researchers expect a 15% drop in overall student enrollment in the next academic year, including a 25% decline in international students. That could mean a loss of $23 billion in revenue for U.S. colleges and universities. One of the unfortunate aspects of this is that we can't even offer a remote option for students whose student visa has not been processed in time because even though they would not be physically trying to enter the United States if they were taking classes remotely from their home country. They can't be an officially enrolled student and take classes for a grade until their student visa has been processed. For postgraduates, once they exhaust training programs, the next non-immigrant classification for temporary employment is to obtain what's called an H-1B work visa. <laughs> they are really going to be shut out because if you're not able to get an H-1B after your student status expires, then you have to return to your home country. Still, Azam holds out hope that her optional practical training application will be finalized by June. After OPT, like, I'm really hoping, like, I work as much as I can to keep, make sure that I am continually employed under OPT, and then after gaining work experience, I'm able to apply for an H-1B next year. Students who are unable to maintain their visa status have 60 days to return to their home countries. Aline Barrows and Isha Sarai, VOA News, Washington.